And we started last week with a new series called, can you feel if my see what it is? Around, not around the world. No, change the world in 80 days, but it's a play on around the world in 80 days. Why the 80? Because Jesus was in the desert before he started his ministry for 40 days. So, so we said, okay, let's give ourselves ample time. We double that to 80. Okay, so we're changing the world around us in 80 days. That's what it's all about. Last week we asked the question, why should we pray? And we found out it is because God is a relational God and God wants to have a relationship with us. This week the question is, where and when should we pray? So if, if I think of my childhood and what the church told me about prayer, I would think, answering the question where and when I should pray, I should pray on a Wednesday, and I should pray during Pentecost, and that was about that. But, God has got a uh, different answer than that. Because the short answer to where and when should we pray is, God wants us to pray everywhere, anywhere, and all the time. Okay, I hope you've heard that, because that's the message. God wants us to pray anywhere, everywhere, and all the time, even if you don't believe. Even if you don't have a relationship yet, God still wants you to speak to Him. Anywhere, everywhere, and all the time. Okay, you can go home now. No, 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 no. In Daniel 6. Daniel, if you remember, he was a guy, a young guy, when he was brought out of Jerusalem um, into Babylon by King Nebuchadnezzar. And then uh, D D Daniel's life took a turn for the best uh, because the Lord was with him and he loved the Lord and he was spending time with God and, and, the, God, and the Lord used him in ma many ways. And then in Daniel 6 we read, he was now older, he was now old, there was a new king and he, and he, was, he was the King Darius, I hope I pronounced that right, King Darius from Persia. And Daniel was such a good administrator that the king liked him so much the king decided he's going to put Daniel as the number one administrator. And Daniel is going to be over the other three and over the 120 and over the whole country. He will only be under King Darius. But King Darius wouldn't have to worry about a thing in his kingdom because Daniel is there for him. And, and, and the king was uh, contemplating doing that. But the other two administrators and the other 120 uh, leaders of the country they were a bit jealous of Daniel. They didn't like it. They wanted to be the number one. They didn't want a foreigner, a stranger to be the, the king's favorite. So they tried to find something wrong with Daniel's work. But the Bible tells us they couldn't. That there was just nothing. It, uh, it, uh, Daniel was just this, this faithful, responsible, trustworthy guy, the Bible tells us. So they couldn't find somebody, something. So they decided if we want to find something against Daniel... It will have to be about his relationship with God. And they made a plan. They went to the king. They went to Darius and they said, Oh, king, you are such a wonderful king. And every king liked to hear that, hey, don't they? And, and then they told him, King Darius, we want you to make a new law, a new decree. We want you to, to, to put it into law that nobody in this world should pray to anybody else except to you, O oh, king. For 30 days. That's where the 30 days comes in. And the king uh, thought about it and he said, Okay, that sounds good. Because he wasn't a very wise king. And then we read in the Bible that Daniel went to his room. He opened his windows. Who looked to the side of Jerusalem. It wasn't close to the Jerusalem. But it was south from where he was. Southeast. And um, he went onto his knees. And like it was his custom, like he was doing every day, he went on his knees and he, pr he prayed to God. And the people came and they, they, they knew he, he, what he was doing. So, that, so they looked at him and they caught him and they, they said to the king, King, Daniel didn't, uh, didn't follow your rules. He, he, he just, I don't need afgefeer on your wet. And the king was saddened. The king didn't want to do anything to Daniel because he liked Daniel so much. But, th but the, the people came back. They said, you better do something. It's a law of Medes and Persians. And, and you must do it. It is written and your seal is upon it. And then, reluctantly, um, the king sent his soldiers. They caught Daniel and they brought him to throw him into the lion's den. And the king went home to his palace and he couldn't sleep at all that night. 
They said his usual entertainment, he didn't want to watch it at all. Had he TV afgeskakel? No. <laughs> I think it was live entertainment that he had. And then he couldn't sleep at all, and he fasted throughout the period that Daniel was in the, in the lion's den. The whole night he fasted. And early the next morning, he went to the lion's den, and he called out, he said, Daniel, Daniel, did the Lord save you? And Daniel was still alive and well and kicking inside the lion's den. He was just standing there. He said, yes. Yes, the Lord saved me from the mouths of this lions, the hungry lions. Isn't that wonderful? The story of Daniel. A man who prayed and a man who wasn't afraid to pray. So from the story, we, we can learn a few principles about where and when we should pray. And the first principle, there's five of them, and I'm just going to go quickly through them, otherwise we will be here for too long, so um, hopefully we won't. But the first principle from, from the story of Daniel is, where and when should I pray? I should not wait for the pauper to strike the fan before I start praying. Okay, do you have that? Usually, many people, many of us, me included sometimes in my life, I prayed when I was in trouble. When things were so bad, you see, prayer was my last resort, not my first choice. As a sick then I would go to the pharmacy, I would get some medicine, and I would doctor myself. If that doesn't help, then I will go to the doctor, and he will prescribe some medicine, and then maybe I will get into bed, and I tr I'll try to stay home and, and sleep a bit. And, and if, if, n if nothing else helps and nothing and all fails then uh, and when the doctor tells me listen this is very serious we don't know what's going on and how to treat you then okay then i will start praying because then i'm really in trouble you see we use prayer as a last resort but daniel didn't we we read there and we can go to that that verse daniel 6 verse 10 daniel knelt down as usual so it wasn't something new for him he just didn't wait for him to be in trouble before he started praying. So that's the first thing. Remember to pray. Make this, the, I'm with the second one. Make God time in your day. Make God time in your day. We can actually stay with that verse and, and just look at the, the later part of that verse. Um, if you can put that in there. And we read, he, that is Daniel, prayed three times a day, just as he had always done, giving thanks to his God. He prayed three times a day. <laughs> Daniel grew up in uh, learning that you have to have prayer time during your day. And he had three times a day that he, he prayed faithfully. And, and that is what we need. We m must make time for God in our lives daily. Uh, if we don't, we will just get too busy. You know how our life is. You will find so many things to do. At the end of the day, you will go to bed tired and you won't have time with God. Time will fly like that. So from Daniel, we learn to make God time daily. Okay, that's the second one. And I'll, I'm going to go quicker now. Uh, this third one is pray every day. You see, we tend to go on Monday and say, okay, let's pray for seven days, then I'm covered. Or let's go at the first day of the month and let's just pray in general for, for the whole month and, and then I'm covered and then I, <laughs> at least it's done. But that's not how God wants us to pray. God doesn't want us to have prayer as, as something we must do and then <sighs> at least I'm, I'm, I'm finished, I, I've done my duty. Your prayer shouldn't be a duty. God wants you to, to see it as, as something wonderful, as, as time spending spend with Him. So God wants you to pray every day. Like the Israelites, when they were in, in the desert, they had to go every morning and pick up the manna. Uh, if they picked up too much for that day, the next day, the manna would go bad. They couldn't keep it. Because God wanted to teach them to trust Him every single day. And to live in that day. Because you actually don't have yesterday and you don't have tomorrow. You only have now. And God wants you to live in the moment. And he wants you to trust him for now. So pray every single day. Don't think you can pray today for the whole week. You, you can, but, but tomorrow you should pray again. Uh, the fourth thing is pray throughout your day. Pray throughout your day. In, in 1 Thessalonians 5.17 uh, we can go to that verse. We read, uh, 
very interesting words. It says, it's, uh, there's n uh, never stop praying. In the old King James Version, it says, pray without ceasing. The first verse says, actually, rejoice always. The second one, verse 17, pray continually and give thanks in all circumstances. Isn't that three very short but powerful verses in the Bible? St 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18. But 17 says, Pray continually. And it means, literally, to keep on praying. But how do I do it? I pray when I wake up. In my mind, I just say, Hi Lord, here I am. Thanks for the, for the night's rest. Thanks for waking me up today. Thank you that I can get out of bed. Then I pray about what is coming next. When I drive my car to work, then I pray. I speak to the Lord. I, 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 I think of, of all the people at work and I, I name them one by one in my, in my mind. I, I told, I speak to God about them. And uh, that is how you learn to pray continuously. When you get a r bad thought in your, in your mind, then immediately you tell the Lord, 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 sorry for this thought. Just keep it captive and take it away. And thank you, Lord, for forgiving it um, and, and taking it captive. And, and that's how you do it. And, and you get used to it. And, and before you know it, it becomes second nature. You don't have to think about God because He's always with you. He's always there. Because that's the, that's the key of that verse. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 God is omnipresence. He's everywhere. <laughs> In Psalm 139, uh, last week we read a few verses, but, but, but if we can think about verse 7 of Psalm 139, it's so beautiful. It says, I can never escape from, this, from your spirit. I can never escape from your presence, Lord. And then if we go uh, to Jeremiah, Jeremiah uh, 23 verse 24, it asks the question, can anyone hide from me, the Lord says? Am I not everywhere? God is everywhere. You can go into the pits of hell. God is still there. He will hear you. You can go into the sea like Jonah did. And it says in Jonah 2 verse, verse 1, And Jonah prayed to the Lord. And the Lord heard his prayer. Even in the belly of a fish. Because there's no place on this earth, there's no place in this universe that God can't hear your prayer. You see, prayer has no barrier. The only way to shut down prayer is not to pray. Because if you start to pray, things will happen, things will change. God will answer you in th ways you didn't even think of. But you can shut it down by not praying. And that's the sad, sad part. And the last one I, I just want to quickly g get to is, and this is a difficult one for some. And I think it's a difficult one for every single person somewhere in their lives. But it's so important. Pray with others. Pray with others. I was a Domini at uh, Van Stans Revier uh, in Gekerk outside of town for 10 years. And at one stage we decided we're going to hold a uh, symphony of prayer. And then one of the elders came to me and she said to me, Donnie, I want to do this because I'm an elder, but, but I can't. And I said to her, why not? And she said, I can't pray in front of others. And I said, why not? She said, I'm too shy. I won't know what to say. I've never done it. Nobody has, has teached me to do, to do it. No, no, I've never prayed in front of others. And she was an elder in the church. And you can say, okay, wow, that's what, what kind of type of church is it that the elders don't want to pray in front of others. But you see, it's something we struggle with. And that's the reason why sometimes, uh, and the world will, if you're not a Christian, you will know this, Christians sometimes get together and they talk a lot about God and they, 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 they say and do a lot of uh, religious things uh, and, and they think they're holier than none, but, but they don't talk to God. And the most important things a Christian should do when they get together with other Christians is to pray. That's the most important thing you can do when getting together, together with other Christians. Because God just loves it when His children come together and speak to Him. When they include Him in the conversation. I've got three children and when, when, when we get together, Daniel, as you, you remember last week, he can't speak. But, but, but if, if my children, and I, I've now got five because I've got two son-in-laws, but, but if, if, if everybody's together and we, we're talking and they include me in the conversations, I feel so important. 
I just love it. God loves it when you include him in your conversations, when you together as us Christians. But, but these five things, even if you're not a Christian, even if you're not sure, even if you don't believe, I just want to dare you to try it, to pray every day, to pray with others. Just, just say, Lord, I don't know how to pray, I don't know what to say, but here I am. That's a prayer. And so, so I started a conversation with him, and it was so interesting meeting this man. And at the end of the day, when we got back to London, as we were getting out of the bus, he said to me, Donnie, would you like to meet the Queen? And I said, what do you mean, would I like to meet the Queen? Of course I would love to meet the Queen, but, I, but it's impossible. He said, well, I'm the personal secretary of the Queen, as you probably remember. And he said, I, said, I said to him, yes, yes, I would love to meet the Queen. Please, what, what should I do? He said, um, are, are you here in London still tomorrow morning? I said, yes, yes, we're only leaving tomorrow evening, late evening the flight back to South Africa, so I've got the whole day tomorrow. Uh, can I come? He said, yes, be at Buckingham Palace at exactly 8 o'clock in the morning. Remember. I said, of course I will remember. I won't think of anything else during the rest of the day and the night. And that night I went to bed and I slept, but I couldn't. I was, I, I was like King Darius. I was just lying awake. And I was thinking of what I'm going to tell the Queen Elizabeth when I meet her. What will I do? Uh, do I do this? Or do I do this? Or, uh, or do I shake her hand like a proper South African boot? Um, or, uh, if, if she asks me for tea, do, how do you do it? Huh? <laughs> or, or do I take it like this? Or, or to, like Paul Creer, put it in the... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I, I couldn't sleep that night. And it must have been early in the morning when finally I fell asleep. And I, th I thought I was in dreamland when suddenly the telephone, uh, um, I didn't have a cell phone then with me. It was, it was in 1997, so it was just early days of cell phones. But the phone in my, in my bedroom rang next to me. And I was so uh, sleepy and I picked up the phone. I said, hello. And uh, there was a voice on the other side. It was the voice of John Mc. Right, and he said to me, um, Donnie, is that you? I said, yes, who is this? And he said, where are you? And I said, what do you mean? And I looked at my watch, and it was half past eight. <laughs> and he said, we're waiting for you. The queen is waiting. And I said, I'll, I'll, I'll be there now. Now I, I know it's about half an hour to, to Buckingham Palace, but I'll, I'll run there. I'll, I'll. He said, no, not to worry. You're too late. You missed your opportunity. And imagine how I felt. But every single day, we have a chance to meet the King of the Universe, the King of Kings, the Almighty One. And so many days, He's waiting on us. Waiting, waiting. And we never pitch up. Okay, the story isn't completely true. Uh, if you know your rugby, you will know John McBride was the um, <laughs> was the uh, the captain of the 1974 Lions to South Africa. To, uh, but why did did I tell you the story? Because as I prepared for this message this morning, I asked the Lord. I said to Him, Lord, please show me your heart about prayer. Please show me. What you feel when we pray or when we don't pray. And the Lord reminded me of something that happened to me when I was a little boy. It was, it was something that hurt my feelings. It wasn't something serious, but I got hurt and I was in tears afterwards. And there in my study as I prepared and I was talking to the Lord, the Lord let me f feel, I believe, what He feels when we don't pitch up. When he's waiting and waiting and waiting on us. And I had such a heavy feeling on my heart. And I had this lump in my throat. And I could hardly breathe. Because every time, every day that goes by that we don't pray, we, that we don't speak to God, we're breaking God's heart. And his heart is breaking for us. His heart is breaking for us to spend time with him. Anywhere, everywhere, every single day. 